Hi and welcome to the first video in a multi-part series where I detail the steps I'm taking in upgrading my car's infotainment system. Today I'm going to be tapping into my car's interior CAN, CAN referring to controller area network. Now these networks are often used by manufacturers as a way to efficiently communicate between various modules in the car. These modules can include power window switches, headlamp controllers, steering wheel stalks and so on. Now it will become more apparent to you why I'm trying to tap into this network when you see what I've done in the car already. So let's take a look. First things first, let's address the elephant in the car, the lack of my centre console. So here was my original stock stereo and in the top was my row of buttons to do things like locking the car, unlocking the car, hazard button and so on. So the idea about removing them is so I can put this Galaxy S5e in its place. It's got a gorgeous OLED screen and that will be the heart of my in-car entertainment, sat nav, controlling my music and so on. So, but this video is not about that. It's about how am I going to replicate these buttons in the future because obviously I need these buttons for functionality in the car. Now the hazard button is kind of important, I can't really do that via software. I'm not going to really have a virtual hazard button on my tablet. So I've got a, I've got a PCB, the PCB that goes behind this. I've wired two cables to the original hazard button and I've got a physical hazard switch there which will go up here. Now please ignore the poor attempt on this. We can see that I've done a terrible job of creating a hole there, but I'm going to do it again and that's where the button will go. And so, that, you know, I need that for MOT purposes, safety purposes. I want a physical hazard button. So, and then I, below the buttons is the original stereo and half of the stereo is still here and that's because I wanted to keep my AUX input during the course of the project. You know, this project's not gonna happen overnight. So, you know, priorities, right? I gotta have my music still. So that allows me to still listen to my music. I set it to AUX input, disconnected the screen, disconnected the DVD drive, and now it doesn't complain about the lack of those, and I can still listen to my music. Cool, cool. So that is that. Now there are CAN bus cables behind the stereo which you can tap into to see this information, uh, to see the information being sent from those buttons. Uh, I know that because these buttons here control the stereo and so these must have a connection to the network in, uh, to control the volume and change station and big bits and pieces like that. However, I'm going to avoid cutting the cables behind there and I've taken it to the driver's footwell. Let me just get my phone, I can show you in the driver's footwell underneath the panel. This is the OBD connector and bonnet latch. There is a bunch of cables that look similar to, one of these cables looks similar to one of the ones behind the dash. So this looks like a CAN bus hub of sorts and these would have been additional uh, connectors for other features that you could get from factory. So I'm going to tap into one of these and see what messages are being spat out of the car. This here is the official CAN bus triple website. Uh, it was a Kickstarter campaign about half a decade ago or so. I did not actually get involved with that Kickstarter campaign. I picked mine up off a Reddit user. So I have a second hand CAN bus triple and it is doing the job. I would say that I kind of regret buying this one just because the documentation and the forms on here are completely dead. Luckily, however, if I go to getting started, I can see references to MCP2515 and Arduino code, which means this CAN bus triple is making use of generic chips that are out there. The MCP2515 is a very popular CAN bus interfacing chip it's using generic chips, which really helps out. The, I've looked into the source code for the CAN bus triple so that I can see which commands I can send over a generic serial software to enable various features. And I say that because the packet logger application 
which is the official software for the CAN bus triple is extremely lackluster it even crashes the CAN bus triple an awful lot anyway let's take a look at some data that comes through the network so initially i've got this connected to the CAN bus triple a handy feature was the auto board rate detection as these networks can operate at different speeds the rate at which has been detected on this network is 83.3 kilobits per second and at the moment nothing is happening so i'm going to go over to this serial command uh, source code and at the top of it is a bit of documentation about what you can set which is really handy for me so let's try enable logging on bus one which is where i've connected the CAN bus triple to the network you saw earlier so 030101 so let's send that and straight away we can see there is a ton of information being sent throughout the car now the reason for that is because the CAN bus network is is like a hub really you've got all the nodes on the network such as window controllers sunroof controllers steering wheel buttons buttons in the center console all of them are constantly sending information to the network and only devices that need to respond to these messages do respond so they get all the messages but they ignore them all except for the ones they need to listen to like the instrument cluster will only listen to the information it needs about the steering wheel buttons okay so where does the official software help me here so let's disconnect from that now that it's constantly sending information connect via this and we can see the information being displayed here is is in a much cleaner manner than a generic serial software let me start by pressing some buttons on my steering wheel and we can see if it shows up here in an obvious manner so i'm cycling through this menu and immediately what comes to mind is this 1a8 which shot to the top of the list and as i'm pressing up and down it's changing the very first hex section on this message you can see the rest of it does change but not all the time and i think that's because it says a length too so it's only taking the first octet of this a payload hex the rest of it is sort of filler data that has no relevance to me pressing this button so it's great we can see already that the computer can see what information is being sent on the network just by pressing these buttons on my steering wheel now what i'm going to do here today is replicate this information and then slowly i will start trying to gather information about what if what is being sent in the car and get a database of this so i can send the information myself more importantly the center console's buttons to put on the heated seats and that's the information i really need but let's just start off with these buttons what i'm going to do is try and send that same information via my laptop and see if i can emulate the pressing of these buttons so i'm going to take a screenshot of this top line so now i've got that stored here i know what message id it is and in this in this source code i can see that you can set a filter on what messages i want message id so let's do that first but not using this let's go back to my generic software clear that once again constant information being spat out so let's disable the logging i can see here it says 030100 to disable logging so let's do that and now it's stopped clear the data enable logging on bus one but filter only these messages now i don't know if it will allow me to do only one message but what i will do is i'll just put the same message id in both in both uh, filters so let's do zero one and so this is in hex format i must replicate the same format here so zero one a eight and let's just do it again zero one a eight so it's filtering on this message id twice so let's press send some generic information here that we will clear out that's probably a response from the arduino saying yes i've received this filter so now let's press these buttons and yeah great i can see that 
my serial connection here is only listening to the steering wheel buttons which are being sent on the message ID 0188 in hex format. Now there's a lot of messages being sent just from a single press and I suspect that's because it's receiving a few messages when I hold down the button. So if I hold it down, yeah, we can see that it's getting a lot of those messages. Now here we, we can see the same 02, which is referring to the length and how, how I can get to that conclusion is if I count each of these message blocks, hex blocks, it matches up with the length here. This is just an ASCII conversion of what is written in here. So this is probably gobbledygook and more important when I'm starting to decipher information that's on the instrument cluster. So I'll ignore that for now. This two here refers to the length of the message here, which tells me that all this information in between the beginning of the message and the end of the message is all filler. And I don't need to get involved with that. So let's try sending my own message. So here we can see in the documentation to send a message, it's 0201 message ID, the data and the length. So let's replicate that information from here. 0201, remember the message ID was 0188. Let's try with 02, because 00 tell is, is gonna be a let go of the button because it's the last one in the list. So let's do 02 and fill out the rest of the zeros because we don't need those. At least I suspect we don't need them based on the length. So 02 and then we need eight blocks, of, well, seven blocks of zero. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, cool. And let's end it with the length of zero two, much like we're gonna, much like we can see here. So let's send that up. Successfully, it does change the screen. Um, however, if I keep pressing send, nothing is happening. And I suspect that's because I need to send a let go of the button. So let's do zero, zero. It's shift enter to send and let's put zero two again. Yeah, great, it's changing the page. So if I go, if I keep toggling between zero, zero and zero two, I can see the page is changing. So that's, that's a success. The page keeps changing as I need it to. I have a feeling that if I keep, if I don't send the zero zero straight after it and I'm doing like the volume buttons, I have to be careful that's constantly pressing the volume plus button. So gotta keep that in mind. Let's try with zero one. Yeah, and it's changing the page the other way. So up and down is zero one and zero two. Cool. So these are the beginning steps to hacking into my car's CAN bus. And what I will do is take this further, find out what other messages are being sent throughout the car and replicate them using my laptop and then hopefully replicate them using the Samsung tablet so that I can turn on my heated seats directly. I'm looking forward to sharing more with you as my project progresses. The idea here is to have a level of customization where my music would fade out if I open the door and the engine is off. In fact, if a song is only halfway through played and I've left the car, restart that song from when I next jump in the car. And while I'm at it, have the volume normalized. I'm sure you've all had that jump scare where you've left the volume too high and you've got back in the car and it gives you that shock. A single button macro to open all my windows and sunroof would be a nice touch too. I think you get the picture. In any case, that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe, and get notified about progress updates. Stay safe out there. This is the Technology signing out. Take care.